If you're still using Times New Roman, please stop. Times New Roman was created for newspaper printing in the 1930s. But these days, most of us read text and screens, and when we do print something, we usually use a laser or inkjet printer. So if you can, start using a newer serif font instead. There are three drop-in replacements I recommend. They all have the same vibe as Times New Roman, they're just not as sharp and delicate. PT Astra Serif I recommend to everyone. It's more modern, it looks friendlier, and it's much easier to read on screens. Newsreader has separate versions for headings, body text, and captions. So I recommend that only to designers and typography enthusiasts. Equity is optimized for both print and screen, plus it has a fantastic all caps version. So I recommend this only to professionals. PT Astra Serif and Newsreader are both free, while Equity costs 119 US dollars. Font download or purchase links are in the description below. You can stop watching this video now, but if you want to know why I recommend those fonts and not the many other alternatives that are available, keep watching. To understand what makes a good Times New Roman alternative, we first need to know what makes Times New Roman Times New Roman. British type designer Stanley Morrison and art director Victor Lardent wanted to create a typeface that was readable in tightly spaced blocks of text with a relatively small font size, 11.5 points in today's terminology. To achieve this, they needed a typeface with three things. First, because of the small font size, the typeface needed a higher X height. That's the distance between the top and bottom of a lowercase letter that doesn't have an ascender or descender, like the lowercase letter X. A higher X height makes text more readable at small sizes, which is why Times New Roman worked better than Garmont. Next, they needed a font with tighter tracking, which means less space between each letter. Compare Times New Roman to Baskerville, and you can see that Times New Roman is more tightly packed. Condensed fonts are easier to set in narrower columns, but that comes at the cost of readability, because letters that are squished together tend to blend into each other. To counter this, you need each letter to have a higher stroke contrast. Stroke contrast is the difference in thickness between the thicker and thinner parts of each letter form. Because Times New Roman has a higher stroke contrast than, say, Bookman, it is still readable in small sizes when set in blocks of text. You can see all these features in action when you compare Times New Roman to its predecessor in the Times newspaper. Times New Roman has a higher X height, tighter tracking, higher stroke contrast, and an overall darker appearance. All of which leads to text that's easier to set in narrow columns, and is easier to read in high-quality print newspapers. Knowing all that, you're probably asking, so what's the problem with Times New Roman then? My main problem is that a font designed for narrow newspaper columns in the print world of almost 90 years ago is no longer fit for purpose in the mostly digital world we live in now. Modern digital fonts don't need to be tightly spaced because we're no longer constrained by narrow columns and the limited number of pages you can include in a broadsheet newspaper. And while high stroke contrast fonts like Times New Roman do look great in print, lower stroke contrast fonts like Mercury are easier to read on screens. Mercury is also a newspaper and magazine font, except it was designed in 1999 and first appeared in Esquire magazine in 2000. The thin lines and delicate serifs that make Times New Roman look so sharp in print actually work against it being a good screen font. And italicized Times New Roman is even more challenging to read on screens. My more philosophical problem with Times New Roman is the reason it's been called the font of least resistance. Because it comes pre-installed on pretty much every non-mobile digital device, it's become a bit of a default. Times New Roman is overused, and if you're someone who enjoys working with nice typography, then you should consider using something else. So what should you use instead of Times New Roman? If you're not looking for anything fancy, then I would go with PT Astra Serif. When you compare the two fonts closely, you can see that PT Astra Serif, which is the one on top, has lower stroke contrast, straight brackets instead of curved ones, sharper terminals instead of rounded ones, wedge serifs instead of sharp serifs, and more open apertures, which improve legibility. When you compare a block of text set in Times New Roman and PT Astra Serif, Times New Roman might be the more familiar of the two, but the text in PT Astra Serif is easier to read on the screen. The reduction in sharpness and stroke contrast also make PT Astra Serif look friendlier and more modern. This is a font I'd recommend to everyone. It's available for free, and you can download it from the Paratype website unless you're a user of Astro Linux, in which case you already have it installed. My second recommendation is for people with more complex digital typesetting needs, and to those folks I recommend Newsreader. 
When you compare Newsreader to Times New Roman, you'll see that Newsreader, which is the one on top, has slightly lower stroke contrast, straight brackets instead of curved ones, round terminals like Times New Roman, wedge serifs instead of sharp serifs, and more open apertures, which improve legibility. The other big difference is that Newsreader has looser tracking, meaning the individual letters in a word have more space between them. The font design compensates for this by having less space between the words in a sentence. So when you set Newsreader in a paragraph, it takes up the same amount of space as Times New Roman does. What makes Newsreader suited for complex applications, however, is that it comes in three optical sizes, display, text, and caption. Newsreader display is chunkier, which gives it more impact when used in titles and headings. Newsreader caption is less sharp and has a very high X height. That makes it much more readable at smaller sizes. And newsreader text, like I said earlier, is less condensed with more open apertures, and that makes it more legible and easier to read on screens. If you're a designer who is creating, say, a digital newspaper or magazine, or you're a typography enthusiast, then this is the font for you. It's free, and you can download it from the production type website or use it through Google Fonts. My third and final recommendation is for professionals. To you, I recommend Equity. When you compare Equity to Times New Roman, you'll see that Equity, which is the one on top, has lower stroke contrast, curved brackets like Times New Roman, teardrop terminals instead of rounded terminals, wedge serifs instead of sharp ones, and more open apertures, which improve legibility. All that makes Equity easier to read on screens. But the cool thing with Equity is that it's as much a print font as it is a screen-friendly one. It comes in two weight grades, so you get to pick the darker or lighter version based on the quality and capability of your individual printer. It also has an excellent all caps version, which is super useful for professionals like lawyers who sometimes produce big blocks of all caps text. All those features and the versatility they bring to your document production make Equity a great font for both print and screen. This does come at a price though. Equity costs 119 US dollars for one or two people, and you can purchase it from the MB type website. So to sum up, I recommend PT Astra Serif to everyone, Newsreader to designers, and Equity to professionals. But those are just my recommendations as a typography enthusiast. What do others recommend? If you're a Linux user, you've probably used or had Nimbus Roman recommended to you. This is a smoother version of Times New Roman and is included in several Linux distributions. I like this font, though I wish its bold was a little bolder. Or maybe you've seen Linux Libertine, which is included in LibreOffice. This has a display version, monospace version, small caps version, and an equivalent sans serif in Linux Biolinum. This is a good set of open source fonts, but they are more calligraphic than Times New Roman, so they're not what I'd go for first. If you're a science, technology, or engineering person, you might have been recommended Styx 2. This royalty-free font has a full suite of mathematical symbols and scientific characters. So if that's what you need, then this is the font for you. If, however, you're coming from the world of the web, then you might have heard of Tinos. This is part of the cross-core fonts collection that was commissioned by Google for use in their Chrome OS operating system. Tinos is their Times New Roman equivalent, while Remo and Cousine are their Arial and Courier New equivalents. I really like Tinos, but it has a completely different vibe from Times New Roman. When you zoom in, you can see that its letter forms are designed around rounded rectangles instead of curves. But if you use Chrome OS or Google Docs, and you're okay with a more squared off design, then Tinos is great. Google also commissioned Spectral, which is a screen-first alternative to Times New Roman that is more faithful to the original design. Spectral is cool because it comes in seven weights from extra light to extra bold. So if you have more advanced design needs, this is a font you should consider. Lawyer and typographer Matthew Butterick, or Butterick, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, recommends a few good alternatives to Times New Roman. He designed Equity though, and you already know that that's one of my favorites. Designer Jeremiah Schof, creator of the highly recommended Flawless Typography Checklist, lists 10 alternatives on his Type Wolf website. Nimbus Roman I've already talked about, but his first recommendation is Tiempus Text, which is one of my all-time favorite fonts. Tiempus Text is based partly on Times New Roman and partly on Galaxy Copernicus, both of which in turn are based on Plantin, and I know that's not how it's pronounced. If you're tempted by Newsreader, but you have a decent budget for fonts, this is my number one recommendation. Another alternative is Editorial New, which you wouldn't write a report in, 
but you would use in an elegant or fashionable magazine. Finally, Alice Sherman and Harry Bennett from Studio Ground Floor have a bunch of recommendations on the Bangram Bangram blog. One of those recommendations, untitled Serif, was created to be as actively neutral a font as possible, along with its sans serif counterpart, untitled Sans. This is a really good alternative for a whole range of different uses. Another alternative from Studio Ground Floor is Writer, which goes to the other extreme and is a more flamboyant alternative to Times New Roman. Again, you wouldn't write a report in this font, but there are many places where it would be the perfect fit. So those are all the recommendations. But what do I actually use instead of Times New Roman day to day? Well, it depends on what I'm doing. My go-to alternative is Source Serif 4. It's neutral, friendly, and available in a bunch of different weights. Also, it's free. And it has a sans serif equivalent called Source Sans 3. So if I'm going to send someone a Word document with embedded fonts, then this is what I'll use. But if I'm going to send someone a PDF, or if I just need something for myself, I'll use Mercury. Mercury is a modern newspaper font that works great in print and on screens. It does cost a bit of money though. By the way, I think the best zero-budget alternative to Times New Roman paired with Arial or Helvetica is Source Serif 4 paired with Source Song 3. And a great paid alternative is Untitled Serif paired with Untitled Song, though my go-to is still Mercury paired with Whitney. If I want to use a more interesting font, I'll usually go with TT Genevers. This modern font has flavors of Dutch typography with asymmetries in the design of the serifs and ovals. I really like using this font. But if I want something classic, I'll go with Stempel Garmond. This is my preferred digital version of Garmond, the French typeface that is several hundred years older than Times New Roman. Finally, if I'm stuck on a Windows computer on which I can't install any fonts, I'll still find a way to not use Times New Roman. In that situation, I'll use Callisto MT, another British old-style typeface like Times New Roman, except that Callisto was published in 1986, so it has a more modern design. Or maybe I'll use Palatino Linotype, an Italian old-style typeface from a German typographer published in 1948, which makes it a few years younger than Times New Roman. And in case other Windows users are wondering, Book Antiqua is a poor digital ripoff of Palatino. If you want a good version of this typeface, buy Palatino Nova. The Linotype version of Palatino, which is also what you'll find on macOS, falls somewhere in the middle. To bring things back full circle, if I was required to use something that closely matched Times New Roman, then of course I would use BT Astro Serif, Newsreader, or Equity. I know I've spent all this time telling you what to use instead of Times New Roman, but I want to end on a positive note. I'll do that with a photo of John Jacob Astor V, then chairman of the Times newspaper, looking on as the first newspaper set in Times New Roman rolled off the presses in 1932. So let me state for the record that Times New Roman is an excellent typeface, and it did its job brilliantly for what it was designed for. Funnily enough, Times New Roman is even having a bit of a resurgence, though this time as a display font in graphic design as opposed to a text font in documents. I don't really hate Times New Roman. I just think, with most of us sitting in front of screens these days, and with the whole world of digital typography at our fingertips, there are newer, more suitable alternatives out there and I urge you to go out and give at least one of them a try. Download or purchase links to all the Times New Roman alternatives are in the description below. There's also a link to my blog post in which I've got a transcript, photo credits, and links to other resources. I'm hoping to make this type of video every few months, so hopefully I'll see you then. Bye!